on today's episode of Gathering the Kings. You gotta have something that's greater than yourself to get you through the mud. That resilience is a gift, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's not something we can conjure up on our own. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, everybody? I'm Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. Today, I've got Jared Pfeiffer on the King stage. My man, how you doing? Hello. Hey, glad to be here. I appreciate you being here. Happy Thursday, right? I say that yeah. every single day. It's like, boom, we're ready to freaking roll today. Yeah, happy whatever day it is. Exactly, exactly. Why, why not, though? Why not have that perspective? I mean, what, what would be the alternative? To be, to be upset about it uh, that it's Thursday? I don't know. I, I, maybe I wouldn't agree with that. Jared, my man, what kind of business do you have, brother? We design and build homes, residential homes. Love it. Where are you located? We're located in Denver, Colorado. Denver. Yeah. You know, I knew that, obviously, but I wanted you to say it because I love Denver. I love Colorado, really. Got some clients out there. I, I think special. one day, yeah, I want some property in Colorado. You know, mm-hmm. I've hunted Colorado a couple times. Nice. I like Colorado. Yeah. For the summertime. Like here in Kansas City, it gets hot, man. Yeah. I need to be where you are in the summertime. But then, uh, like, already it's already November. I'm not interested. You know? Oh, really? No. So like the ski, snowboard. Yeah. Ice For fish. a couple days at a time. But then, like, I need to be back <laughs> in, like, South Florida. <laughs> we got you. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. I apologize in advance. I can't, I can't hang with the cold. But, Jared, we're not here to talk about my weather preferences. <laughs> um, I want to know, at this level of the game, you're, you're building homes, you're creating dreams for people. Like, what a cool opportunity that you really you've built for yourself and your team. But, but I want to know, my first question is always the same. Why? What are you after? What's the bigger picture? You've already accomplished so much. What's left? What do you got to go get? Uh, what are you doing it for? It's it's just the challenge, I think, is my why. I like the if someone's like, "Hey, this is this might be impossible," I'm like, "Go on." But I I really just enjoy building. I enjoy being a part of something that didn't exist and now exists because of yeah. something our team did. You know, that's just it's special, and that's what kind of keeps keeps us going. You know, I've had that feeling. We built a house here in 2021, moved in earlier this year, and I used to think. Like, I do still sometimes, I think, man, this is, used to not be here. I used to just look at this land, just sitting here and do it, you know, but, but now this structure is here. What, what do you think or what has happened along your journey that's given you that perspective of the challenge, the build, the creating something out of nothing? Or were you always like that? I think I was always like that, even with Legos as a kid. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of when I fell in love with building was Legos. But yeah, I like, I like, I like people I like being around people. So okay. when I set off to do my own thing, I knew it was going to be with a team. It wasn't yeah. just going to be me doing my own thing. I just love people. So I love working for people, working with people. I like people. You like people. You're a people, people. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you have this, this challenge piece. What, what during the days where it really is challenging? Right. Like yeah. maybe not necessarily the days where you're building, you're building, but it's just one of those days, man. Oh, yeah. What are you thinking? Press through the challenge because I like go on like this can't be done. Is that what you're thinking in those days? Or is it even something else that's inside of you that, that you're pressing into? When it's really, really difficult, I I just hear this. This shall pass. <laughs> That that gives me hope that, hey, it's not going to always be this bad. That's right. Tomorrow's another day. You know, that's kind of where my focus goes immediately is, yeah. you know, some days you lose something, you know. That's right. Another day, another day. We get another shot tomorrow. That's right. 
it's a healthy perspective. You know, there's poise. Really, that's the word that comes to my mind. When you say that, it's like there, there's this poise about like understanding where I'm at and going, okay, it's difficult right now. I'm in a season. I'm in a week. I'm in a certain project. Whatever it is, it's just like, ooh. But this too shall pass. Or as David Goggins says, you're not going to die, bro. It's not going to kill you. <laughs> so just finish. Stay hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I I would also say like, the team around me, you know, I got some really dedicated people. My brother works on the team. My wife works on the team. So there's like a family aspect as well. But, yeah, you know, some of the employees have been with me over a decade. And wow. so that also comes to mind, you know, when things get tough, it's like, hey, this is, you know, this is why I do this too. It's like, I enjoy working with these people, you know, and that that's what keeps me going too. It's, it's like a family, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I had a conversation yesterday, the day before with a guy. And he was talking about, he was thankful that he had a co-founder because, you know, moments where it was difficult for him, his co-founder was like, bro, get up, let's go. And then, you know, obviously vice versa. And so has that been the case with, you know, working with your wife inside the business, with your brother inside the business, just this family dynamic of pulling each other at the right minutes? Or has it also been a tension point, a struggle? Like what's been that dynamic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. It's, it's, yeah, you know, the other person's there to pick each other up, you know, when you're having a bad day. So yeah, we feed off each other all the time. I can think of maybe one fight over the last 13 years with my brother. So, you know, we get along, we, we built Legos together, you know, and so here we are building houses together. And then, yeah, my wife is on the design side. So, you know, we're kind of in different worlds. So that's, that's just been a lot of fun. And uh, we've also been filming on a TV show and that's been a whole nother just like aspect to everything. It's just like. Oh, yeah. Cool. Can, can you say what show? Something. Are you What's able that? to say what show? I think so. <laughs> I, I, if I, not, I we'll, we'll bleep yes, it out. I can say it's like, it's Idea House Mountain Modern streaming okay. free on Roku. Well, oh, wow. <laughs> you, you gave the full promotion there. I love it. Okay. Well, yeah. No, I, I think that there's lots of people that would want to check that out, obviously, because it's a show. But how did that come together? Like, did they approach you? Did you guys reach out? Like, how did that come together? Yeah, they approached us. I believe they found us on Instagram, just kind of following us for, for a while. And they were looking at doing a, it's basically the, the producers of this old house. And so they were looking at doing a new show and thought, Hey, wonder what people are doing in Colorado and what it's like to build in the Rockies yeah, and doing, you know, doing mountain builds. So that's cool. Yeah. It's, we started that about a year ago. That's awesome. Well, I think that uh, we've already, you know, had this very in depth are we we went deep fast about you know what you guys are doing and family all that kind of fun stuff i want to i want to go into your your history a little bit sure i want you to tell me you said legos is kind of how it started but was there a business before this business was being an entrepreneur always in the cards for you kind of tell me that beginning and then the beginning of this business no i was actually homeschooled all the way up through high school so okay you know there's a lot of you kind of teach yourself and when you're homeschooled you know yeah and so Acquiring knowledge is just something that you learn as a homeschooler. It's just like, hey, if I want to know something, I will find it. Do yes, everything on my part too. Have you tried to duplicate that in your children? What that? Have you tried to to replicate or duplicate that? That like, yeah, I'm not as good as my parents, but you know, <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, they actually go to a, a classical school here, and we okay. love. So you know, running a business and and homeschooling them together would be impossible. Dude, so maybe I should try that. Yeah. <laughs> right? Didn't you just say, yeah. I know. I, I said that. <laughs> Might as well try it. I love uh, it. So anyway, that, that's giving me that gumption, I would say, is from my parents of just like, if yeah. you can do anything you set your mind to, you know, yeah. was kind of one of those principles that I've learned yeah. from. So. Did you yeah. think that you'd always be a business owner because of that or did that, that formulate at some no. point? No, I thought it was going to be in a rock band. <laughs> on the globe. That's uh, different. <laughs> I joined rock bands when I was 15 in California. Then I was an army brat. We moved every two years and got to wow. see a lot of the world. Yeah. That's where the homeschooling came in handy. Of course. You know, yeah. Was, yeah. Getting to see the world. That was awesome. And yeah, I thought I was going to be a rock star one day. <laughs> well, you, you are just maybe not in the music industry, right? <laughs> oh man. So yeah, it's, it's been, uh, you know, one of the first jobs I got was actually, I was 15, I was bagging groceries okay. and it was just tips only. So Ooh, I knew hustling. Yeah. As hard as I could work, 
is, you know, my goal is just like, all right, I'm going to be the one that makes the most money today. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's just that challenge of like, you only have you, you know, in totally. front of what you want. So I think that was honestly the, probably the initial spark of just like, cool, I can go as hard as I want to go with bagging groceries. <laughs> I, I love, I mean, as, as silly as this sounds, when you said that, I literally went to my mind of like, okay, I went to a grocery store that was in my hometown. Yeah. And I was like, man, if I had had the opportunity at, you know, a young age like that to freaking, okay, I offer gum to them. I carry their stuff. Mm -hmm. I, you know, like whatever, whatever, like bring a water bottle, you know, like I'm just yeah. trying to be concierge total all the way in at freaking 14 and hustle these tips. I literally went there for that 30 seconds when you were saying that I, nice. I was there. I'm, I'm pumped up. I'm excited. That's cool. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then I went from there to washing windows for a guy, you know, it was commission based. So once again, hard as I wanted to work, you know, I could, I could make what I wanted to make. So yeah, I was always calling him saying, Hey, I'm going to be wrapping up early. You got another job for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, j I did that for five years and then started work working for Revolve Design Build. At the time, it was just called Revolve. And it was two business partners that owned it. And I just wanted to get to the construction world. I, oop, I missed one thing. <laughs> In between washing windows and construction, I, I did computer consulting for a company and okay. built computers. And I was I a in this egg. all day and yeah. it was my own thing. It was my own company. I started, I was making actually pretty good money, but I really didn't like working by myself and I didn't really like sitting at a desk. I like to be, I like every day to be different. So <laughs> spoken so like a real started, entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. And that's when I started looking for something new and then fell in love with the guys I was working with. So they, yeah. they taught me a lot. I had a, a you know, a mentor. He taught me all the trade work and I fell in love with the work, the details, the tile, the flooring, carpentry, cabinets, you know, you name it. We did it all. Yeah. So a couple of years after working for them, they decided to sell the business. And I said, sure, I'm, you know, I've never run a business, gotten a business loan out, but I'll figure it out. How hard could it be? It's just like Legos. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Insert. No, but yes. <laughs> yeah. And then okay, a year later, so you went like, and got an SBA loan. You went and got some debt. You bought yep. these guys out and said, "Hoorah! Here we go." That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Did you know in that moment what it would be today, or was it more of a just like, "Wow, this just kind of just came to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just run with it, see what happens." I did have some dreams for it initially. Uh, I don't know if I would could have articulated at the time. Exactly what I'd be on TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't, that wasn't a thought. I just wanted to do, I wanted to provide something that was, you know, had, I put everything into it and it was the best it could be and give it to someone who appreciates it. Yeah. And so no matter that being on a small scale, just a bathroom remodel, or if that's someone's you know, luxury custom home, it, it's the same thing, you know? It's just yeah. doing the best you can for somebody and someone appreciating that, you know, is what gets, what gets me up in the morning. Yeah. You're the, uh, the appreciation word that you said there. I think that we all have that to a degree. It's sometimes tough to see that because of all the, just the, you know, mud that we walk through, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of mud the last two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially in the construction world. I mean, a lot of yeah. good mud. A lot of, a lot of not so good mud, you know, need a little clay in the dirt, but too much is not good, you know? So, okay. I want to know, you know, practically speaking, you take over a business. So, so you didn't start it from scratch. I've taken over right. businesses that I've purchased. I've also started from scratch and, and they're totally two different struggles. The, the reality though, is that you had to make good decisions, right? And so that's what we talk about here on the show, good and bad decisions. I want to know in that first year, maybe first two, three years. Mm -hmm. What was a decision that you made that was clear as day? You can look back and go, this was so impactful and I do it again and again. We can learn from it. Please share it with us. Yeah. After the first year, I actually, the guy I worked with, who was my mentor prior to buying the company, I asked if he would want to be my partner. And so I would say that was a really good decision. I hired him as a, you know, 
partner 50 50 and you know we said let's do this thing and so i learned so much from him you know as far as the crafts goes yeah. and then having his help allowed me to learn a lot about the business you know how to estimate how to do sales how to you know all right. the things that i hadn't i hadn't had to do yeah so you know that was a really good decision okay yeah. and so inside of that decision it was basically you buying expertise mentorship maybe some <clears throat> some history or experience that just allowed you to maybe fast track a little bit mm -hmm. is, am i am i picking up what you're laying down yep that's that's exactly right and there was some consequences too you know we were learning how to bid we were underbidding you know we would underbid our time you know there's a lot of decisions we would make that would affect the bottom line lose money on a project here or there yeah but i still see that as a good decision cuz it's like that was that was my education too so yeah yeah we we as entrepreneurs we pay for our education differently than just very differently tuition <laughs> Yeah, I feel you on that. And I think everyone listening can can feel you on that. The good decision, though, for you, actually, it was several, but wrapped up into one relationship really is what it was. Yeah. Why, why do you think in that moment you were maybe humble enough or open-minded enough, give away half of your company to be able to gain those experiences, knowledge, mentorship, all those things? I mean, I... Partially, it's just nothing, nothing to lose, really. It's, you know, hey, I'm, I'm figuring this out. You know, I'm not, I'm not a seasoned business owner. I didn't go to school for business. And, you know, I'm, I'm learning on the fly here. And just to have someone partner and say, I'm, I'm willing to give that a shot with you. Yeah. Just that confidence, you know, to, to go at it together was, was huge. So I just looked at it like, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to do it alone, you know, is how yeah. I looked at it. Hey, kings and queens, Chaz Wolf. I want to talk to you about something that's super important to me. We put a lot of time and effort, we meaning myself and my team, into this podcast, into the content that goes out every single day. And if you have been getting any sort of value or insight from this, we want it to be able to reach other business owners too. So we would love if you would like, comment, share, leave a review, post, share again, <laughs> all of the things on social media, on all the different platforms or even on the podcast mediums of Apple and Spotify. We would love to be able to get our content into more hands, more entrepreneurs, so they can grow their business as quick as possible. Together, we are building a community of like-minded entrepreneurs who are committed to growing their businesses to new heights. So let's do this. Let's help each other. Let's help each other grow. Well, it's like two or three, maybe even four times now you've mentioned this, this love being around people. You quit the one business because you were by yourself. Like, you're people, people. And so I think that, you know, not only have you displayed that you can work with your family, but now you've talked about having a partner. Mm -hmm. What would you say to the guy who's listening? Who's like, oh, I could never, I could never have a partner. I could never work with my brother. I could, you know what I mean? Like all the things that you've been able to do. Is that something that they should consider? Is there something wrong with them? You know, like, what would you say to that guy? Oh, man. That's a good question, man. It's not for everybody, you know? I think entrepreneurs need to see outside themselves and their limitations, you know? Yeah, that's good. And and you got that through family partnership. You can get that through a coach. You can get that through, you know, someone that you have lunch with on a weekly basis. You know, whatever. I mean, there's lots of different ways that you could do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that principle remains the same. That's right. I guess my, my underlying question to those questions was, how did you know that? How did you know that you needed to see outside of yourself? Was that would go, that would probably go to my faith and, okay. and Jesus, you know, just knowing I can't do anything without him. So yeah, it, it gets real personal, real deep, real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cause you have this perspective of, well, my parents said I can put my mind to it and I can do anything. But then you have this like flip of the script where it's like, well, I can't do anything without him. And so it's like, yeah. How do you piece those together? In yeah. essence, they're complete opposites, but not really. How do they go together for you? Yeah. I mean, that's the journey right there. That is, that is the best workaround answer I've heard. <laughs> yes, it is. I know. I know. It's a good answer, though. It really is. Rewind it. No, no, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good listener to hear. 
in all seriousness, yeah. because it is the journey. That's the real, that's the real answer. We got to work it's, it out. That's exactly right. I was going to say it, what it really is, is it's like, it's doing the work. Like, yeah. do you just go to church and you're like, cool, that's, that's it. Or do you actually talk to your Lord and Savior every day? And do you like spend time and do that work and actually care about what he says? Yeah. You know, are, are and you waiting so, for the, for the answer? The, yeah. the response. There's been seasons where I didn't listen. And I did my own thing and I was yeah. like, oh, I'm trying to do this all out of my own strength and it's not working out because I'm limited. <laughs> you know, there's only so much a human can do. All right. So I'm going to try to uh, bring a summary here for just real quick here for the listener, whether it's partnership, whether it's family, whether there it's someone else in your life, you need someone to give you a perspective differently than what you have. And the reason why you need that is because you're a limited person. You're a person, which means you're limited. You're limited in your action. You're limited in your thoughts. You're limited in your beliefs, your current beliefs of what you think about yourself, your business, whatever. It won't change unless provoked by another person or in this case for you and I by our faith and maybe that small whisper that we get of what about this or what about that? And and obviously, like I said, that that third point maybe for you is like, Yes, I know I'm limited. I know I need people, but I also know that I need a greater source, you know, mm -hmm. a, an inspiration, a whisper that, that gives you some direction that maybe is there in certain seasons or not, whether we want it to or not, whether we press into it or not. And so did I miss anything? You want to add, you want to, did I, did I forget anything from those, no. from, that, from that point for the listener? No, I would say that that stays the same for, you know, the last two years, like the mud we're talking about. You know, that's, that's real. Like, you know, as you get, you gotta have something that's greater than yourself to get you through the mud. That resilience is a gift, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's not something we can conjure up on our own. That's right. So. That's right. So good. All right. Let's flip the script here. I want to yeah. know of a bad decision, something that you made, Jared, that just did not turn out so good. My first new build, I didn't sign a contract. Oh, <laughs> Uh, Hurry up, twist, twist the knife on me. You already stuck it in me. Twist it now. <laughs> What's the rest of the story? Yeah, that, you know, it was just, man, I learned a lot on that job, but it did end up in a, in a lawsuit at the end, client not being happy. And I, I didn't have a leg to stand on because I didn't cross T's, dot the I's. I was so focused on, man, this is like the dream, right? When you're, I had been doing additions, I had been doing renovations. I eventually wanted to get into the new build, you know, new construction. And I was like, this is the dream. I'll, I'll do anything for it. Yeah. And so I just took the job and I let, you know, I let the client lead that discussion at the beginning and, and, and perform it the way he wanted it to be performed. So super bad decision. Never do anything without a contract, even if it's with your buddies. It's what I learned. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting. I was just having this conversation two days ago with one of my real estate partners, and we were talking about this very same thing, this contract topic, and how you want to believe people. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You know? See the and best. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't, right? It yeah. just means, though, that if we can agree here and put it in writing, then I, then outside of that, I can. We can be people. We can, I can. Yeah. Let's put it in writing though. So that way neither one of us have to actually push on each other or pressurize each other in that way. We just, it's just written. It's an agreement. It's obvious. It just removes all the pressure of, do I actually trust this person? Cause you want to trust them. You want to. Yeah, you do. Yeah. That's, that's kind of, you know, the principles I grew up. It's just like, Hey, you look, you look at each other in the eye. You're, that's right. you know, you have integrity. You do what you say you're going to do. And so you expect that from others too. And that's not always the case. Yeah. Yeah. The contract holds that in the place. <clears throat> it's even funny too, since we, since we're, you know, having this conversation kind of through the filter of faith, even, you know, I have found personally in my history that oftentimes it's the buddy or in this case, someone in the church. Yep. Where, because there's that additional connection family, or because we go to the same church or whatever, then now it gets labeled as <clears throat> legalism or needing grace or yeah. however they want to phrase it. And it's like, no, 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 <laughs> we have an agreement. Yeah. And that this is exactly why I did the agreement because I know people like you that like to 
change things up and then use some flowery faith language, you know, to get it to change, which is, which is it's sad, man. It's sad that that happens, that I even have to prepare like that. Because yeah. just like you, where I'm like, look, like not only my word, like I was taught that from my family, but then from a faith perspective, like right. excellence is a representation of Jesus. Like, why am I changing on my word? Right. But like you said, it's not how everybody thinks. <laughs> So the lesson here is put it in a contract. contract. <laughs> it doesn't matter how good of a friend, whether they love Jesus or not. It doesn't matter. If, if, even if even more so if they're a friend and they should realize it is that much more important for your relationship to freaking write it yeah. down, make it obvious, agree to it, and then stick to it. Yeah. And, and also, you know, hiring a lawyer sounds really expensive, you know, that, to write up your contract or look over a contract maybe you already have. But if, if it saves you that one lawsuit over your whole business, like it pays for itself for 20 years. So just, yeah, you know, it's just, it's not worth, it's not worth trying to save the money of a lawyer costs. Yeah. Well, I spoken learned. from a guy who's gone through the uh, lawsuit process. If you're listening here today and you haven't gone through that, take his word, take his word and say, Hey, look, go put some, dot some T's dot and cross some I's. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, like in all seriousness, get your stuff buttoned up. That's how that's how a king runs his business. Like yeah. hire the lawyer, get it done right, have a contract in it. You just need to operate professionally. Is really what it comes down to. It's the difference of showing up in a in a marked van as opposed to a no marked van. It's like you wouldn't even think about showing up to a customer's house in an unmarked van because that's not professional. It's the yeah. same thing with contract. <laughs> that's right. All right. So what do you think about process, like decision making process? We've talked about good and bad kind of over the course of your journey. If a decision comes across your desk today, how do you process that? Are there steps that you follow, things that you think about? Give us your insight. Yep. I mean, our company is ever evolving. You know, we, so the issues are ever evolving. <laughs> the economy the last couple of years has been evolving. So there's just a lot of adjustments to be made. I make decisions with, with the team. So yeah, classic, right? For the guy that likes, you know, working with people. People. Uh, <laughs> You know, my, my chief operations manager, you know, architect, interior designer, team leads, our estimator, he's been with me also over 12 years and does all of our sales, you know, as a team, we, uh, we make these decisions together. So we just have a weekly setup, you know, for like, Hey, issues list, let's go over this. Um, this is what my gut's saying. What do you guys think? Here's some different perspectives, make a decision. So, yep, exactly. I love that. The uh, board of directors that you've built inside, right, yeah. of, of your team. Yeah. There's there's guys listening today that don't have that, right? Whether they don't have a, as big of a team as you have mm -hmm. or they've just never really thought about, like, getting other people's opinions, ones that, whether it's on their team or other entrepreneurs, even whatever, what would you say to them to be able to facilitate making decisions like you do? Yeah, yeah. I would no. say prior to that, a lot of times you just have a gut reaction, listen to it. You know, your gut usually doesn't steer you wrong. Just that initial gut of like, oh, maybe we should walk away from this opportunity or whatever that gut feeling is. And then another exercise I've done just being practical is like, if, you know, you get that phone call and you got this issue to, to figure out and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, it's just like, what I do is I literally go out of our building and just walk around it, <laughs> breathe, Simple. walk around and go, okay. Is there someone I can talk to about this or, you know, does a decision, like, did I come to a conclusion, you know, in this like five minute walk yeah. doesn't screw your day up. I know it's so easy to just be like every minute matters when you're entrepreneur, you're like every minute, you know, my day, like, yeah, was, I, I know. Cause I, I, you know, I think that way too. It's just like maximizing every minute. Yeah. Yeah. So that's gone against like what I do naturally. And so I, I forced myself to do that. Yeah. Slow down. Take five minutes. Yeah. The five minute window is just so practical. Like any, mm -hmm. like you just said, anybody can do it. It doesn't actually interrupt your day. Right. Step outside, get some fresh air. And, and a lot of things can happen in that five minutes. I know exactly that five minutes that you're talking about. And whether it's just you either thinking about nothing or thinking about the problem and you know, like you said, maybe come up with a connection, you come up with a, a partial solution, all that can happen because you just created a little bit of space. Right. Good stuff. 
Okay, I'm gonna go to the speed round here. My first question, it's always the same. I wanna know about KPIs, okay? What's your top KPI or the, the thing that you're tracking? If you could only track one thing forever and ever, what would it be? Mm, good one. It would be uh, the amount of custom homes we build in a year, I would say, more than, you know, how much, how much are these homes? Sure. So, like, how many people are we making a difference for this year? Right, right. What does that metric tell you? If you know that metric only, mm -hmm. how does that then help you understand or manage or run the rest of the business? Yeah. I mean, if we're doing our size right now is typically about 12 homes a year. So that's kind of what our whole team takes on. And so basically knowing that, like what we have under contract and all that, that just, then I know like, Hey, my team is taking care of like, we're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to be good and we're going to keep the lights on and all that. So yeah, that's just kind of that just really zoomed out high level, okay. you know, let's get these 12 in our contract. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> let's take care, let's take care of the, of the nut. And then, mm -hmm. and then we can press into bigger target. Let's go ahead. Okay. What book would you recommend, Jared, for a business that's uh, trying to grow? I would recommend music. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. I was like, I'm interested. <laughs> you, you got me intrigued. What, what are we doing here? I listen to so much music, probably more than books on tape or I love reading too, though. Don't get me wrong. Is there, is there a I, favorite rock band that you jam to on the way to work? Is that, is that, is that how you get hyped up and beat your chest? And but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of into the chill electronic vibes right now. So, okay. All right. Yeah. There, there's so many books I I love reading actually, but it wouldn't be like what you would think, like the, the five habits of whatever, you know, like yeah. I've read all these things, but the books that seem to, to me to matter the most and give me driver is like the great divorce by CS Lewis. Uh, you know, that, that's something I would recommend. Like if that doesn't like get you excited good. about just what's after the slag too, yeah. you know, all the other stuff you can read too. That's great. Yeah. You know, there's ways to tweak everything. I'm hearing you say you get a greater sense of purpose. I mean, especially if you're talking about, you know, what's next after the right. life, you know, like then, then you have to ask, well, what is this for? And what's the purpose of this? And how long is it going to be? And in comparison to eternity, it's like, yep, you know, which makes you feel small. And yes. you're like, then wait a second, what am I really doing? You know, yep, a lot of a lot of mind tripping going on there. Really, yeah, puts you in a good perspective to uh, to receive a a different leading. That's right. Good stuff. What do you think about intentionally networking or masterminding with other business owners? I love it. There's a couple local guys that kind of do what we do. Okay. And I have them over. Like, you know, it's it's not a regular thing. It's not like something we set up or sure. monthly deal, but it's really just, just kind of pinging each other on different things. So, hey, I'm struggling with contracts as an example, or hey, I'm, right. you know. So these guys are in the industry and, you know, a lot of, a lot of people shy away from competition. They're like, oh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make friends with the enemy. And it's like, no, 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 we're all in this together. All, you know, there's plenty of work. Come on guys. So yeah, there's guys that are literally, you know, our neighbors here, we're all working in the same neighborhood and we get together. We get lunch, get coffee and, and pick each other's brains. Iron sharpens iron. And right. so I think it's, yeah, huge. I think it's really important. Yeah. It should be I, I wouldn't expect anything different from a people person. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You know, we're going to name this, we're going to name this show, the people person or you know <laughs> come meet come meet uh, the the chill electronic music vibe people person you know i don't know how we'll name it but i got one last question here for you jaren yeah i've got to know especially just man we've we've taken this conversation in so many different directions it's been great if you had a chance to whisper in the younger jared's ear what would you say i would say That's a good question. Wow. Don't worry. Yep. Gonna be fine. Okay. Yep. There's times I've I've worried and I didn't need to. Yeah. Don't worry. That that can be a song, right? Don't worry, be happy. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> what would you say to the listener right now who is worrying? Who's a little stressed, wearing too many hats. Yeah. 
you know, maybe just trying to put a team together. They've got ambition. That's obviously why they're listening. Maybe yeah. they're in construction even. Maybe they, they, they grabbed a hold of the, the, the title here and thought, this guy's in construction. I can learn something from him. What would yeah. you say to the listener? I would say ask for help. Never be too proud to ask for help. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. Jared, how can the listener find you, whether they're in your area and they need to build a beautiful home or they just want to pick your brain as an entrepreneur? How can they find you? Yeah. I mean, Google us. We're, we kind of pop up everywhere. Revolve Design Build. We're in Denver, Colorado. We build within a, our radius. So we build up in the mountains and we build in Denver as well. So there's 26 metro cities. So we don't cover all of those, but most of them. Cool. So yeah, look us up and maybe check out our TV show. And yeah, absolutely. The dude's on freaking TV. Thank you for being here. We will put all that in the show notes. So that way they can easily connect with you and... Cool. I've got several buddies and connections in that area that I'm going to be connecting to you that could probably nice. benefit several of your projects and you benefit them. So we'll definitely take care of that as well. But dude, in all seriousness, thank you for being here. Blessings on your family, your business, all that you put your hand to. We just really appreciate you being here. You too, Jess. Thank you, man. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries, and now interviewing over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together one thousand kings specifically who are grateful but not done we're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business family and communities and here's what we believe that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy so if that relates and and resonates with you and you know that you need people around you sharp qualified other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.